what goon <laughs> calls dressing it's a condiment. Condiment. But Seth. it's dressing. The Catwalk Podcast showcases the greatest of the people of the Permian Basin through partnering in conversation with high-level leaders, social entrepreneurs, nonprofit leadership, and industry executives. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Catwalk Show. I am your host, Jay Whitlow, and today on the show, our special guest is Kristen Holloman. Kristen is a small business owner here in Midland, Texas. She's been the owner of Absolute Dance for the past 10 years and is passionate about bringing dance opportunities to our community and providing a space where kids have a chance to form lifelong friendships. Born and raised in San Diego, California, Kristen attended the University of Tennessee, graduated with a degree in accounting and logistics. During her time at the university, she was a member of the Tennessee dance team and there had her first dance teaching job. It was there at Tennessee where she found her love for teaching dance. After graduation, she and her husband moved here to West Texas for his job and Kristen started out as a career as an accountant for West Texas Gas and then had a part-time job at Absolute Dance. Within the first year of living in West Texas, Kristen had the opportunity to take over the ownership of Absolute Dance. It was under Kristen's leadership that the studio has expanded, moved locations, and has added several competitive dance teams. Kristen is also a more than just great dancing certified coach where she helps inspire and lead other studio owners in the same industry that she is in. So we're glad to have Kristen Holloman as our guest today. Elevate your operation with Performance Chemical Company, the pioneers in redefining chemical solutions for the oil and gas industry in the Permian Basin. Unveiling groundbreaking ideas since 2017, our dry chemistry plant stands as a testament to innovation. Our products and services revolutionize water treatment, production, midstream, and salt water disposals. We're your strategic partners in optimizing investments, slashing operating expenses. Performance Chemical Company. How you get there matters. Welcome back to the Catwalk, everyone. I'm your host, Jay Whitlow, sitting right across from me is the great Chris DeGaulle. Chris, what's up? Oh, not much. How are you? Great. How was Ghostbusters? It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Where would you rank it in the four, I guess, now? Yeah, there's four total in the original saga, but it was, I'd say, third, but it's a close third. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I haven't seen it, but I will go see it. It's good. For you. Yeah. And as I mentioned in the opener, we have a special guest with us today. Please welcome to the catwalk, Kristen Holloman. Kristen, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Normally, I'd be in the middle of a five-year-old jazz class right now, so i got to switch up my mentality, but I'm excited to be here. This might be as fun as a five-year-old jazz class. It's going to be entertaining. (laughs) You are a dance instructor, and I want to get into some stuff in a little bit. Uh, So let me see if I can name the dances that are kind of uh, highlighted at Absolute. And we'll talk about these a little bit later. So it's tap, jazz, ballet, contemporary, musical theater, acro. I'm missing I'm one. I'm very impressed. Lyrical? Lyrical. That's the other one. That's the other <laughs> very one. Very impressed. Okay. Are you guys, before we get into your bio, uh, are you guys big salad bar eaters? Yes, I love a good salad bar. Yeah, for sure. Do I look like somebody who eats at a salad bar? Okay, I'm just throwing this out there. Okay, I'm not I'm not saying anything, but you're a big salad bar guy, right? If steak is at a salad bar, then yes, yes. it is. Okay, so the other day, and I know there's not many places that have salad bars around here, right? You can get a good salad like at Chick Fil A, uh, but there's not really good salad bars. So I'm eating at pretty much the only salad bar I know in town. And I had something happen to me, and I wanted to, to bring it to the masses. So, you know, when you get your plate uh, and you start with the lettuce, mm-hmm. the next thing is these silver bowls of boiled eggs and carrots and all this kind of stuff, right? So I'm there. I've already paid my money. They have these metal bowls, okay. right? Containers, okay. right? And they have all of the stuff in them. So I'm there, and there was a good number of bowls that didn't have anything in it, right? 
So there's like no eggs and no carrots and no broccoli sprouts. So I asked, I looked around and I asked for a, a person to, f to fill those. And this is what I said. And the weirdest look on her face. I said, do you have any more condiments? Now, she left after looking at me weird and came back with packages of mayonnaise and mustard. So help me out here. No, you deserve all of, that. All of that out there is condiments, right? Toppings. I would say salad toppings. Condiments are the dressing, for sure. Okay. Okay. What did you, why were you going to say that what you just okay. did? <laughs> what goon calls dressing? It's a condiment. Condiment. But it's dressing. But it's a condiment. But it's, okay. <laughs> it may be under the umbrella of condiments. Yes. But no sane person calls it a condiment. Okay, so Kristen's going to bail me out on this because you called it toppings. Yes, I would. That's I would closer than toppings, right? That that's right. Yeah. I, but <laughs> toppings are also what you put on ice cream. True. At a salad ice cream bar, right, or a ice cream bar place, right? I'm going to shut this whole thing down. <laughs> you're done. I told you you're going to love this one. So she comes back with all this, and the guy behind me, he called it toppings. He was like, well, I usually refer to it as toppings. And I'm like, no, it's condiments. So I looked it up. And in the Webster's Dictionary, it says that a condiment is a topping on top of food that has been prepared. Nacho cheese is considered a condiment. So there you have it. <laughs> For all the masses to understand, when you go into a salad bar, you are putting condiments all over your salad, as a <laughs> topping would be. Would, would you call a salad something that was prepared? Like, when you say prepared... Well, I was preparing it. So, when you say prepared, a lot of people are going to assume, like, <laughs> I've cooked a burger. Yes. Right? And I want to put ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, whatever... On yeah, the burger. Yeah. Knowing you. Here it comes, Kristen. Here it you, comes. You put together some <laughs> lettuce, a little bit of carrots, a tomato, and some cheese. Yep. And you've walked around and called yourself a chef yes. because you prepared yes. a salad. Don't forget boiled eggs. Yeah, that's why Broccoli I think you're at you put that on there. real because yeah. you're filling up a silver bowl of meat and boiled eggs and call it a salad. Well, Kristen brings up a good point about the toppings. So is that more of like maybe a Tennessee thing of the toppings? Because I've never heard it called toppings. I've, well, <laughs> we don't do a lot of salad around here, so I, d I think true. you're justified in not knowing that answer. That is, but yeah. I would just assume that it'd be toppings. That is a great point right there. We don't do a whole lot of salads because you were saying barbecue. you needed a steak or barbecue. <laughs> With yours. So yeah. I mentioned Tennessee because of your bio. Mm -hmm. So you went to the University of Tennessee. Yes. Volunteers. Yes. Go Vols. Right. Go Vols. Uh, I think they got knocked out in the tournament, didn't they? Or are they still in? They didn't. No, they, they beat did not. Texas. Yes. So I'm like, we're they still beat, in it. <laughs> yeah, they beat Texas. Is your bracket? Did you do a bracket? I did not. But my husband has done like four. So we'll see how it I ends like up. I like him. I like him. People who just do one bracket, I'm like, come on. Yeah. Do multiple. Have a lot of I options. did 15. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah, the logic for people like y'all who do multiple brackets, it's like a numbers game. It's like I eventually can't lose. That's right. That is and true. And you never talk about the 14 losing brackets. You <laughs> only talk about the one winning yes. bracket. Yes, because yes. that's the only one that matters. Okay, let's, let's talk to our guest today. Enough of the salad talk and Chris throwing me under the bus. So let's talk all things Kristen, okay? Born in... San Diego, California, home of Top Gun and Tom Cruise. Is yes. that right? Yes. Okay, tell me about growing up in San Diego. Um, growing up in San Diego was amazing. Uh, the weather is always perfect. And I did different sports growing up, but mostly dance was my focus. And then I'm from a, a fam. I'm the oldest. Okay. And I have a younger sister and a younger brother, and we're a pretty competitive family. Uh, my younger sister was on our U.S. national field hockey team and was Stanford Pac-12 Athlete of the Year. And my brother-in-law, who's married to her, was Stanford Pac-12 Male Athlete of the Year as a wrestler. And then my younger brother went to Texas State, So, um, and he was a safety there. So, yeah, we're a little bit of a competitive athletic family, and it, mm. was, it was a great childhood, yeah. Do y'all play card games and get, like, 
knock down, drag oh, yeah. out. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite card game? We would play Spoons growing up, but yes. we would play, I don't know if most families do this, but we played Tackle Spoons where you'd hide the spoons in a different room and then you'd have to, you know, duke it out for the spoons. Wait, wait. Okay, hold on. So, Tack- not recommended. <laughs> tackle Spoons? Yes. <laughs> you would actually tackle somebody to get to the, that oh, is yeah. brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. I want, I want, growing up, and you know my daughter, Krista, yeah. uh, we played games all the time, but we never got yeah. that crazy with tackle. Yeah. It, tackle I, spoons. That's just how our family was. Wow. We're just <laughs> okay. Rowdy. Why Tennessee for college? I, so I do have an aunt and uncle who live in Chattanooga, which is about two hours away from Knoxville. Okay. And I just always loved Tennessee. Growing up, we went there over summers and always visited. Um, And then I knew they had a great business school and a great dance team. And so I just knew um, that that's kind of where I always wanted to go. And I loved it. I had the best experience. I couldn't say more more great things about Tennessee. Now, was it at Tennessee at some point that you fell in love with teaching dance? Yes, actually. Tell me about that experience. Yes. um, I got my first teaching job in Tennessee. Um, just to make a little money on the side. And uh, that's kind of where I absolutely fell in love with it and kind of nurtured my whole career. So, yeah, that was absolutely incredible. And then when I moved here, I got a teaching job at Absolute. I'm sure we'll go into that a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where I started my whole journey is Tennessee. Okay, so Tennessee, how did you deal with that orange? Their colors. It's the best. What do you mean? No. Oh my gosh, I love it. I couldn't wear more orange. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been back recently? Um, one of our former students is now on the Tennessee dance team, okay. and so yeah. I went back last year. Um, I did the alumni game and got to visit her and see her on the sidelines. So that was really cool. Did you have uh, any like sorority or anything like that that you were involved in? Any extracurricular stuff um, at Tennessee? I didn't. I didn't have too much time. I did a uh, dance team while I was there, and then I taught at the studio, um, and then I was in the business school. So it was pretty yeah. pretty busy. <laughs> What's your, what was your degree in? Accounting and logistics. See, so. you, you you got me on accounting, but logistics. That's, yeah. You're like, how do you study logistics? Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. yeah, it's kind of one of those random ones in the business field yeah. that's attached, but it was, it was great. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, is Rocky Top the official school song oh, yeah. of Tennessee, oh, or yeah. is it just a song? No, um, everybody knows it. The whole state actually knows it. Actually, if you're not from Tennessee, you know what Rocky Top is. It's just our staple, so. I barely know what it is. Now, I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you to sing it or anything, but what was one of your f- highlights of being at college? Um, one of my highlights, I think when you're on the dance team, you uh, when you enter the stadium, the band makes a big T, and you run through the team, lead out the football team, and the whole crowd goes nuts. And that is just something that I'll remember forever. It was incredible. And there's 100,000 fans, so yeah. it's a unique experience. So you're sure. running the football team out. Yes. Did you ever trip and fall? or No, but I was sure that? out of breath by the end of it. <laughs> you had to run the whole length of the field? Yes, yep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, that's crazy. All right, yeah. so uh, Tennessee, you graduated from there, mm-hmm. and then – what happened next? Did you immediately move to West Texas or was there some space in between there? Um, I pretty much immediately moved. So I met my husband my sophomore year of college through random mutual friends and we did long distance. He was from San Antonio and um, we had talked about and planned that I was going to move to San Antonio right after I graduated. Um, And he said, I actually got a job in Midland, and I would like to pursue it. We might only be there for a year, but it's a good job opportunity, and then we can move back. And I had only ever been to San Antonio, and I thought, well, I like Texas. Sure, it's going to be kind of the same thing. It wasn't exactly the same thing, but we absolutely love it. We're Midlanders for life, so... And you stayed longer than a year. Yes. Oh, yeah. Obviously. We've been so here that, 10 years now. That didn't work out so much about going back. So when he said going back, back to San Diego or back to San, San Antonio? San Antonio, yeah. Antonio. Actually, okay. his whole family lives in Fredericksburg now. Um, so we Not go. Yes. There's a lot of great shopping there. Yes. And they actually, they did a winery 
They really? owned yes, they owned a winery on their property for seven years and they sold it in 2020. Oh wow! So. During COVID. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Actually, uh, right before COVID, so it, it worked oh, really? out so it worked perfect. Out great? Yes. Okay. Well, I know you love to travel, and I'm going to hit on some yes. of that in a little bit. But let's talk about absolute dance because mm-hmm. you landed here in west texas and actually drew mm-hmm. worked at performance chemical which is our sponsor of the yeah. podcast right full circle so yeah. that is that is small uh, small world so y'all were here uh you started uh at an accountant position mm-hmm. at a local gas company yes and he was here yes and then you did some part-time work at absolute dance right yes. what was that job like um, yeah, I, so after my first month of living here, I was like, I need I need dance back in my life. It's been too long. <laughs> so I immediately found um, Absolute Dance, and the owners at the time were uh, Scott and Becca Payne, and I absolutely love them. I have, oh my gosh, all the best words for them. Um, but they own the studio, and about a month after I started teaching, she said um, they had a lot of other businesses and hobbies, and that at the end of the season, they were either going to close it down or were hopefully going to sell it to somebody who would keep it running. And um, Drew and I kind of looked at it and we thought, okay, this kind of aligns with more of my passion in life and let's take a chance and go for it. And it's been great ever since. That's kind of how I got all started. Were you an entrepreneur from before this or was this something you were like, I don't know what to do, but let's do it? Probably the latter. (laughs) Um, I didn't know that I wanted to do that. I thought I would go and get my CPA and finish that whole route, but I can't imagine doing anything else now. I'm such an entrepreneur in spirit, for sure. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And and I want to dive into that a little bit bit more. So you're working at Mm part-time and fulfilling that itch of teaching dance, Mm -hmm. and then you were approached or had that conversation where you were going to take that over. What was the first week like when it was yours? Oh, a blur probably. A blur? <laughs> um, no, it's been amazing. And Becca actually was right by my side mm-hmm. for probably the first whole year um, helping me out because she really wanted her legacy to be passed along and be successful too. So I had a lot of help. Um, I'm also part of a um, – it's called More Than Just Great Dancing. It's mm-hmm. a, a studio ownership mentorship program, and um, we're all kind of connected and help each other out. So I've gotten a lot of great help from the start, which was very helpful. <laughs> Ten years mm-hmm. that you have been the owner. Yes. Right? How many families does Absolute serve in our community right now through your dance program? We serve about 900 families. What? So, yes. Yes. <laughs> Which I am one of those 900. Yes, yes, the yes. best. Yeah. Oh, I'm the best? The best family? <laughs> well, your daughter. Your okay, daughter. Okay, she's okay, the best. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so 900 families. And what ages is that? We start at age two and we go all the way up to 18. Um, and, we, yeah, I think our biggest chunk is, like, our three- to seven-year-olds. But, yeah, we have wow. it's a big, it's a big 900 family. 900 <laughs> families. Yes. What's, what's hard about managing 900 families I'm sure you have 900 ideas yes right and complaints and (laughs) I'm sure you have a great team with you a lot it's managing it all is a lot but I have the best team and our goal is to always shrink the room so we want every student and every family Mm. that comes through the doors to feel like they're known they're loved they're super important to us so we try and make connections and mini teams and create like as personal love of family for everybody as that we can Right. Ten years, and I, I, I want to hit on this because I think this is something that most people may not know, but you've helped under your leadership. You have expanded, absolute. Uh, you guys moved locations at some we point. Did, we did. We only know one location. We weren't with you guys before. Um, and you've added some competitive teams, right? You guys travel to competitions. Yes. I've gone to a couple of those, but did you ever think when you took it over 10 years ago Mm -hmm. that you'd be impacting 900 families and creating what you have, what you have created in Midland? Not at all. I just, you know, wanted everybody who came through the doors to enjoy it. I didn't care how big it was, um, but we've been so blessed that it has grown and grown into what it's become. And yeah, I just have a team that is such rock stars and helps me through all of it. 
Um, so yeah. So what would you tell a family, say a young family who's got a what what seven, six, eight year old? They're thinking, oh, my daughter is going to be the next dance uh, queen of the world or whatever. And so they come to you and say, we want to put him or her into your program. What do you? What's your encouragement to them? So. Not every child is going to be a professional dancer, and that's okay, and that's not our goal, but we, dance is such a great tool to help teach kids how to be great people. So that's kind of our foundation in general, is like, if you want to be a professional dancer or a college dancer or a teacher later, we should be able to provide those opportunities to get you to that place, but our main goal is to help give kids a foundation and help them learn work ethic. Mm. Delayed gratification is huge. Um, so that's kind of like our main foundation. Okay. Why did you start the dance competition teams? Was that a missing link of the program that you yes. thought at some point we're going to start that? Yes. Um, I always grew up being a competitive dancer. I know there's, um, you know, some misconceptions out there about the dance world in the competitive arena, but I always thought it was super healthy and super just amazing for my career and um, I wanted to be able to offer that to our kids you know just because we don't live in Dallas or Austin or Houston you can still have those same opportunities in West Texas. I've been to a couple of competitions not a whole lot but I've been to a few um, as time allows <laughs> um, and I've always been impressed by the traditions that you guys do. Yes. What are some of those traditions? Explain yes. to us why traditions are important at a competition. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, we have so many new traditions, but um, we do a lot of pairing up, like our, our big sisters and little sisters and getting the little sisters ready. Um, we always pray as a team before we go on stage. Um, it's just it's the best experience, and I know all the kids love it a lot. Yeah. Tell me about your team, and then tell me about your leadership style. Okay, well, I was just blessed with the best team from the get-go. I don't think I could have gotten any luckier. We've all been together um, from the beginning, and um, do you want, like, each team member or? Whatever you want to tell Okay, me. so our core team is our office manager, Miss Amanda. Miss um, Chelsea's our artistic director, so she handles all the recitals and the costumes. Miss um, Bonnie is our classroom director, so she tries to handle, like, all of our families and our curriculum. Um, and she's actually, my first year when I took over the studio, she was a senior at the studio. Really? So we've been full circle together. Um, and then, yes, I have... Uh, Krista Barker, who is our curriculum director and competition director in Phoenix. And so we I've have heard that name a lot. Yes, yeah. she is amazing. We yeah. love her. Yeah. OK, um, walk me through the leadership style that you have. What, what would you say that style is? Is there somebody that you maybe are are similar to in your style or you kind of just do your own thing? Hmm. I guess my style is definitely being like a cheerleader and a positive role model. Um, I try and everybody kind of knows what their lanes are and what they're good at. And I just get to kind of support and encourage along the way. I think there's a very powerful, um, oh, it was, it's a pyramid and it shows like the members of your business and it's, you know, your clients, your staff, and you are at the bottom and you're supposed to be lifting up the rest of your community. So that's where I try and plug myself in is where can I help each team member so that they can serve our clients the best. One thing that I've always been uh, admiring about the end of the year program, uh, I think it's called the recital, yes. right, where everybody gets to show off and take their pictures and get dressed up and everything. You have a segment in the show where some dads get to dance. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> and um, I have not been asked to do that yet. It's your year. I know it's there's a year. reason why <laughs> that I've not been asked to be a dancer. Uh, but do you have a lot of dads that love to get involved in pouring? And how can dads get involved in the program? Yes. Um, so I think it kind of started out, it was a tradition before I took over, mm -hmm. actually. It was staff husbands and a couple of, like, you know, the prop dads or people who would help out. Um, they got to kind of be a filler in the show and do their own little dance. And it has taken off. I mean, they get a standing ovation every year in the show. Um, so we open it to anybody who wants to join. You're welcome to join this year. Um, and it's it's just a really fun way for all the dads to kind of connect and get together. It seems like sometimes when the sign-up for that is, 
it misses getting to me. And there's there might be a reason for that. So maybe Krista's hiding it. Yeah, maybe she's like, uh, let's not tell him when that when that is. But this is her last year, and so I'm excited uh, to see what see what happens with the last couple of months and competitions and stuff. So tell me, I want I want to back up real real quick. I forgot to ask how you and Drew met. We met uh, on a random weekend through mutual friends. He had a best friend that went to the Air Force Academy, and I had a family best friend. Mm -hmm. And um, my family friend needed a date for his senior ring dance. So um, I just went, and we met that random weekend, and we could not stop talking back and forth, and we'd go visit each other. And, yeah, we're the rest, yeah the rest is history. <laughs> okay, I, I know you through dance, but I don't know him mm -hmm. very well. I've seen him dancing the dad's thing yes. um who would play in a movie about you who would play him and who would play you um ooh, okay so he is definitely the life of the party um showman I'm trying to think I don't know if you've seen four Christmases okay yeah. but Vince Vaughn in that movie is my husband to a Vince D Vaughn. that's awesome <laughs> so I guess yeah that would be okay Vince Vaughn okay and who would play you and then in in that movie Reese Witherspoon is his uh counterpart so I guess that would be our rules <laughs> that would be that would be y'all what do you think Chris is this a Reese Witherspoon person over here wake up over there I can see it are you dreaming about salads no <laughs> I'm dreaming about going home and eating steak <laughs> <laughs> okay, Reese Witherspoon, what do you think? I I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I know you have a love for travel. Mm -hmm. Uh and I know you recently went to Austria. Is that Austria right? And Switzerland, yeah. yes. Okay. So where did the love for travel begin? Was that something that Drew brought into the relationship or you had that love, or did y'all both say, Hey, we love to travel? Yeah, I think we it was definitely after we were married. He had never been out of the country and I had never been out of past Mexico and we took a trip to Italy and it kinda opened up our world. I think there's so many other cultures and it puts things in perspective of you're so small in this you know, huge planet that God created for us. And so we just addicted to it it's amazing I want to see everything that I can where all have you been um we've been um Australia New Zealand um a lot of places in Europe Mexico and Canada is next on our list really yes I don't know anybody that wants to put Canada on list, so <laughs> it looks beautiful well okay your favorite part about this last trip in Austria, because mm -hmm. I saw a picture that you posted. It looks like you were in some glass house, yes, or something overlooking the Swiss Alps or something. Yes, oh Tell my gosh, that. it was incredible. It's like so picture perfect, and we went with my family, which was an amazing experience. Um, but yeah, there, there's, we went skiing, so there's the mountainside, but it's also green and beautiful. It's just like nothing you've ever seen. I loved it so much. Give me a sense of what you don't like about international travel. Do you have a pet peeve? Um, well, coming back from anywhere to Midland, you have a chance of getting stuck. So Anywhere to Midland. Yes. Um, there's been a couple of times where we've been stuck overnight in Denver when, you know, you just want to get home that last night. So I that, hate the Denver airport. <laughs> yeah. I hate that airport. We are always delayed. I don't, I don't get yeah. it. <laughs> we've been over to England. I, that's where I travel to. Oh, cool. Um, and London. <laughs> And it never fails that somehow it gets rerouted to Denver. Yes. And I remember, like, the movie The Terminal with Tom Hanks. Yes. Getting stuck in that airport for a long period of time, thinking, yes. I'm never going to see the light of day yes. or Texas ever again. I just don't, I don't, I don't like that airport at all. Agreed. What do you love the most about international travel? Is it that just going places, or do you hate the flight, or... Um, no, the flight's not too bad. Um, I guess meeting new people and experiencing their cultures, eating their food, it's like, that's the best part about it, just seeing how different everybody lives. So do you have a problem eating other cultures' food? I do not. I, I love it all. See, I, we haven't gotten anything super weird I, yet. I know what you're <laughs> thinking over there. I can't do, when I went to Africa, I took 27 individual wrapped Ritz crackers with me because I just can't eat. I can't eat outside of Chick Fil A because you have the palate of a child. <laughs> I do. I mean, when we were in France, we did escargot, 
And I loved it. Yeah, I'm, out. <laughs> I'm out on escargot. I can't do it. Do you, you eat weird food like that? Yeah. I've got no problem trying something new. But you're the kind of guy who thinks that guacamole is gross. It is gross. See? It is and gross. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. That's a sin in California. This dude is Wait, a what? child. A Wait, did you say that's a sin? On hot dogs. That is the state of avocado. You got to put guacamole on everything. <laughs> that's just the rule. I could never live in California then. No, but that's the problem. You're the you're a child. You're the person <laughs> who puts ketchup on a hot dog, and that's it. Uh, what's wrong with that? Because you're a child. Maybe a little bit of grated cheese. Okay, what's the worst thing you've ever eaten mm. on a travel? Like you're like, uh-uh, we're not doing that again. Hmm. I actually had a fondue one time, and I thought there was no cheese that I didn't like. I love all cheeses, but it was it was like a stinky cheese, and I will never forget it. It was it was really rough. It was a stinky cheese. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Okay. All right. Well, I want to I want to wrap this up. I appreciate your time being here, sharing about Tennessee and especially Absolute Dance. But I kind of want to wrap some some things up here. So what's what's next for you? You know, I, I kind of get that sense that you're like. I want to start this. I want to add this to the dance uh, uh, business. What's what's coming that's next for you, and what's next for Absolute Dance? Um, so we reevaluate every year. You know, since since COVID happened, I'm a little bit, you know, just make sure we're stable and and that every year we just get better and better. So that's kind of my main focus. And um, I think I mentioned before that I became a certified coach for more than just great dancing. So helping other studio owners or um, other managers of studio owners, like with their registration questions or, um, you know, just anything about their business, that's kind of my next um, venture is just helping coach other studio owners. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> who, who do you – you know, we're sitting at this table uh, having a conversation. If we were using that as uh, a symbolism, who would you invite to sit at your table and listen to? Who gets Ooh. to pour into Kristen's life? Okay, so one of my biggest influences uh, was always my grandmother, and she, just the way she lived life and was so adventurous, I try and always model. Um, she passed away a couple of years ago, but she would text all of our family members every single morning a positive quote, oh. and um, that kind of stuck with me, and now we have calendars that people have um, sent us with her quotes. She, I think she sent over... 400 people a quote every single morning yeah it was all connected all over so um I kind of try and live my life by her obviously I want to fulfill God's purpose for me and yes that's those are like my main influences in life well if I was going to ask you this one question to sum it up in a sentence what do you want to be known for I want to be known for building something that people feel loved and that they're a part of whether you were a student for one year or for all 18 years that you feel like you always have a friend or a role model at the studio um, and that we always got your back so that's kind of what I want to be known for that's great I I love what you guys are doing at absolute um obviously <laughs> our family has been involved for a number of years and um, I know it's going to be a, that recital. It's probably going to be a really sad time oh goodness, uh, for yeah. uh, everybody, but especially for my wife and for uh, my daughter. Uh, but I just want to say publicly thank you for pouring into her and all of her friends and all the girls that have walked through that yeah. door and the girls that and guys that will walk through it in the future. Just keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate that. I appreciate what you're doing. Um, I do have one more question mm -hmm. before we go. Is Cool Whip a dessert? I, I would say it's a topping. <laughs> See, it all goes back. A topping. Everything is a topping. But I could eat Cool Whip with a spoon. Yeah, and no. Just sit no, down. The, the fat kid in me, a tub and a spoon is all I need. <laughs> That's all you need. My wife and I will sit on the couch and just eat some Cool Whip. Like, we've got no qualms about it. No shame. Just without, just me. by itself. Just by itself. That's no crazy. Whatsoever. Frozen yeah. or refrigerated? Ooh, refrigerated. Great question. I would like the one in the can that you 
you spray oh, out, you know. I can just... taste the aerosol on that. I don't, yeah. I'm not a fan. The, like was... spray cheese. Yeah, ooh, yeah. like spray cheese. That's true. <laughs> thank, thank you again for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining with us. We will see everybody next week. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this episode. See you next week. Elevate your operation with Performance Chemical Company pioneers in redefining chemical solutions for the oil and gas industry in the Permian Basin. Unveiling groundbreaking ideas since 2017, our dry chemistry plant stands as a testament to innovation. Our products and services revolutionize water treatment, production, midstream, and salt water disposals. We're your strategic partners in optimizing investments and slashing operating expenses. Performance Chemical Company. How you get there matters.